Hey, what's going on guys? Nick Herring here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And guys, what I have for you today is my week three waiver wire rankings. Guys, what we're going to be talking about are the players who kind of broke out or have a good opportunity going forward and guys who I'm looking to add to my roster in my various different fantasy football leagues. I'll kind of go through my top 10 guys here today and hopefully that'll help you guys out in kind of ranking who you should be going after in your waiver wire. So we're going to start off right away here at number one. We've got Devonta Freeman of the Atlanta Falcons running back. This is a guy now who is going to be the starting running back at least for the next few weeks. Tevin Coleman did go down with an injury, so that leaves Devonta Freeman with a good opportunity here to kind of take over this job, prove what he's worth, and maybe even potentially keep the job for the remainder of the year, especially if Coleman kind of takes a little while to come back. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. So this is Freeman's opportunity here. It's hard to find a starting running back, a guy who really doesn't have much competition on the roster, in free agency. So this is your opportunity to do it. This is your chance to go out there, find a guy that does have that potential to be that kind of bell cow running back for a team. Now, granted, I don't expect Atlanta to be an amazing running team going forward or anything like that. But anytime that a guy can get 15 to 20 touches per week, that's a good opportunity for him to score a touchdown and at least be fantasy relevant. So we're going to put, again, Devonta Freeman as our number one running back and our number one overall waiver wire player for week three. Moving on to number two, we've got Matt Jones of the Washington Redskins. Now, this is a guy who is pretty firmly set in now what I believe to be a timeshare there in Washington. Uh, he did outproduce Alfred Morris this past week uh, in a big, big win for the Redskins against the St. Louis Rams. The Rams came out there and won in week one against Seattle and then lost to the Redskins. Kind of crazy stuff, but... A lot of that came from the fact that Matt Jones was completely dominant in this game. The guy ran for 123 yards and two touchdowns. He also caught three passes, despite the fact that, again, he was you know, kind of splitting snaps with Alfred Morris. Now, I will say this. I still think Alfred Morris is the guy to own at least for the next few weeks, and we'll see kind of where things go from there. If Matt Jones, obviously, if he continues to put up the numbers like he did in week two, this will not be a split for very often, or for very long, and Matt Jones is definitely going to take over that job as the starter. But for right now, I do believe that Alfred Morris is still going to be given that opportunity. He hasn't really done anything bad to lose the job, so I don't expect that to happen. But again... Matt Jones, if you look at him in the preseason, if you look at what he's, what he's done so far this year, he's clearly the more explosive player and arguably the better overall player between these two guys. And what's really interesting is that given the fact that he caught three passes, that's actually something that Alfred Morris doesn't really do very well. Now, it's again, it's three, so we can't really take much from that. It's not like he caught eight or something, but Alfred Morris has never been a guy who catches passes. If Matt Jones can kind of develop into that here in the Washington offense, we could have a very, very interesting situation here. If he catches two to three, four passes a week, then we're really talking about somebody that has some very nice value in PPR leagues going forward, especially in dynasty leagues. Number three on the list, we have Deion Lewis of the New England Patriots. Now, a lot of people are going to have Deion Lewis ranked as their number one guy, and, and I can understand that. Okay, Deion Lewis has looked amazing so far, quite frankly, for the Patriots. We thought that LeGarrette Blunt, when he came back in week two after his suspension, would kind of reassume his role as the main running back there in New England. A lot of people banked on that very, very heavily in their fantasy drafts. They figured, hey, I'm only going to lose him for one week. I can live for one week without him. And then in week two and going forward, he's going to be the main guy there in New England. But guess what? That did not happen, at least not in week two. Deion Lewis actually took 73 of the 86 snaps that the Patriots had on offense. He was on the field for 73 of 86. That is almost all of them for all intents and purposes. LeGarrette Blunt had fewer than 10. That is a huge discrepancy. Deion Lewis is a much more diverse player than LeGarrette Blunt is. I'm not going to say that he's a better overall, a better runner. I'm not going to say that he's a, even necessarily a better fantasy player going forward, but the possibility here is that Deion Lewis keeps this job. And if Deion Lewis keeps this job and he can stay healthy, granted he is a smaller guy, maybe a little bit more prone to injuries potentially than LeGarrette Blunt is, but if he can keep this job, this is a guy that can be a big time fantasy asset. He's a guy obviously that can get some carries and do some good work with that, but he might be a better version of Shane Vereen, a better version of Kevin Falk, guys who have had similar role, roles here in uh, the New England Patriots offense from you know the past five, six years. And if he's able to do that, I believe that Deion Lewis could potentially finish in PPR leagues as an RB1, a low-end RB1. The problem, obviously, with New England, as it always has been, is that we just don't really know what's going to happen with New England running backs. They change on a week-to-week -week basis. 
Jonas Gray, anybody? You know, this stuff can change very, very quickly in New England. So don't put all your eggs into the Deion Lewis basket. But if he's available, he's worth a speculative ad right now. I think at least for the next couple of weeks, he should probably be the guy that gets the majority of the touches out of this backfield. And if that happens, he can give you some good value going forward. Next on the list, we have David Johnson of the Arizona Cardinals. Now, David Johnson is kind of an inter interesting player because I'm pretty sure that he's still stuck behind Chris Johnson and Andre Ellington once Andre Ellington does eventually come back. The problem is that we don't know when Ellington's going to come back. And Chris Johnson, quite frankly, didn't look great in week two. He got over 20 touches and he still only ended with like, what, 71 yards or something like that, if I remember correctly. So not a great performance, not an awful performance or anything, not something where you're definitely sitting Chris Johnson if you're the Cardinals. But David Johnson showed explosiveness. This is a guy that scored a return touchdown, and he had some big plays for the Arizona offense. So I definitely think he's going to be getting more touches going forward. Unfortunately, Bruce Arians has made it pretty darn clear that he is not going to give a rookie all of the touches out of the backfield or even the vast majority of the touches. So it's going to be probably a 50-50 share split at best. The thing is, is that I believe that with David Johnson's skill set, he has the potential to at least, you know, outproduce Chris Johnson over the next few weeks. So if you're somebody that's in a desperate type of situation at running back, if you lost some of your best guys, if you've got DeMarco Murray and other players that aren't performing to the level that we thought that they would, there's a possibility that you might want to consider looking at a guy like David Johnson in, in some of these matchups where he might be kind of a little bit more prone to be on the field depending on the type of situation. So I like David Johnson. I think that he's a good guy to add, especially in your dynasty leagues and certainly somebody that could help you down the road here in your fantasy league this season. Number five, we've got Michael Crabtree, the first wide receiver on this list. Yes, it's going to be loaded with a lot of running backs, especially at the top, because anytime that you see a running back that could potentially win the job in their, in their place, that's pretty much going to put them ahead of most of these wide receivers. But I like Michael Crabtree a lot going forward, especially after what I saw in week two. Michael Crabtree was targeted 16 times in week two, 16 times. That is unbelievable. That's got to be up there with the highest amount that he's ever been targeted at all throughout his entire career. And he did a great job with it. He caught nine of those passes for 111 yards and a touchdown. Crabtree looked very, very good this week playing opposite of Amari Cooper. And it was against a tough defense in Baltimore. I mean, this wasn't a, a cakewalk type of game for the, for the uh, Oakland Raiders. And they were able to come up with a, a big victory in that one. So I really like what Michael Crabtree is going to bring to the table for the Oakland Raiders. I wasn't super high on him coming into the year, but he's definitely somebody that's shown me that he still has something to play for, and he looks like he's got a good connection with Derek Carr right now, so that could definitely lead to some fantasy production going forward, and he's certainly worth an ad if you're desperate at wide receiver, if you lost a Des Bryant, if you lost you know, some of these other guys that are going down right now and really aren't performing up to the level that they should have. I would definitely consider Michael Crabtree to be the number one wide receiver pickup this week just given the fact that he's getting targeted so much. Even though this offense might not be very good overall, I certainly think that getting targeted 16 times in a game makes a guy shoot way up on my fantasy radar. So I'm going out there and getting Crabtree in just about every single league that I have that he's available in. Moving now to the bottom half of the list, we have James Starks of the Green Bay Packers. Now this is one that could be kind of low ranked on the list right now. He might shoot way up the list depending on what happens with Eddie Lacy. But it does sound like Eddie Lacy's ankle injury is fairly minor. What I will say, though, is that James Starks is probably one of the most valuable handcuffs in fantasy football, even prior to the Eddie Lacy injury. Now that Eddie Lacy's injured, I think he's pretty much got to be owned at least by everybody who owns Eddie Lacy. And even if you don't own Eddie Lacy, you could potentially go out there and snag up James Starks and kind of consider him to be a possible you know, lottery ticket type of player going forward. If Eddie Lacy does get hurt, obviously Starks can step in and perform at least at a decent level level. He did have 20 carries for 95 yards this past week. Not spectacular numbers, but good enough to make him a viable fantasy asset in a tough game. I mean, quite frankly, it's a tough game against Seattle, and they were able to win that game. So uh, again, I like James Starks. I think that he's, again, somebody you have to own if you own Eddie Lacy right now, especially for Monday night's game. This week, uh, the Packers do play on Monday night, so Eddie Lacy is probably going to be listed as questionable Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We probably won't know what's going to happen until Monday. They're going to do that by design, obviously, and that's going to suck for fantasy owners if you don't own James Starks. If you do own James Starks, you can keep Eddie Lacy in your lineup, figure out what happens, and then on Monday, if he's not going to play, okay, fine, you throw in James Starks, and at least you get some points out of that position. But if you don't own James Starks, now you're in a tough situation where you kind of have to decide on Sunday whether you're going to roll the dice on Eddie Lacy or if you're 
going to put somebody else into your lineup. So there you go, guys. I definitely think James Starks, again, has to be owned at least by all Eddie Lacy owners. Next on the list at number seven, we've got Eric Ebron, tight end of the Detroit Lions. Now, Eric Ebron is kind of an interesting one because this is a guy that was disappointing in his rookie season, but really he's looked pretty good so far here in 2015. He does have a touchdown in each of his first two contests, so that's something that's pretty difficult to come by for the tight end position. And I definitely think he's a guy that could continue to put up good numbers here going forward. He is the third option there in the, in the Detroit passing game behind Calvin Johnson and Golden Tate, obviously. But again, he is somebody that could potentially be a nice red zone threat. Tight end's a difficult position to come by great talent at, and Ebron is somebody that does have the physical ability, so I think that there's a good possibility here that he does finish as a top 10 fantasy tight end this season. Next on the list, we've got Duke Johnson of the Cleveland Browns. Now, Duke Johnson, kind of in a tough situation right now because the coaching staff there in Cleveland actually came out and really praised Isaiah Crowell for what he did this past week against the Titans. Looked okay. I don't think he was anything spectacular. I have to go back and watch the film once again, but uh, I don't think he looked anything spectacular. But the reality of the situation is that Isaiah Crowell touched the ball 15 times to Duke Johnson's 12. So despite the fact that the coaching staff thought that Isaiah Crowell looked really good, they didn't really give him much more carries than Duke Johnson got. So I don't think it's necessarily a, a, you know, an 80-20 or anything like that. I kind of think it's like a 60-40 split right now. And I believe Duke Johnson's the better third down back as well. So I think that there's a good opportunity for him to catch some passes going forward. I know he hasn't done much of that yet, but there is that possibility going forward and hopefully he can be a kind of a valuable asset in the PPR formats. And if he can get the job, if he can somehow outproduce Isaiah Crowell, which shouldn't be that difficult if he has much talent. I don't think Isaiah Crowell is a spectacularly talented player himself. So if Duke Johnson can go out there and outperform him here over the next couple of weeks, we could see the opportunity for Duke Johnson to take over as the 60 of that 40-60 split. So there you go, uh, Duke Johnson again here at number eight. Next, we've got Marvin Jones of the Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver. This is a guy who kind of, he wasn't really somebody that we were excited about necessarily. I, I don't know how to describe this because he was like one of the bottom end guys that you could draft at the end of your draft and really not have to risk anything on. And I thought that there was a possibility that he could have a good start to the season this year if he gets that chemistry back with Andy Dalton. And it looks like that's kind of developing so far. He did catch a touchdown this past week, so that's always nice to see. And it does look like he's kind of beat out Mohamed Sanu as the wide receiver two there in Cincinnati. Now that does make him, in my opinion, the third or even the fourth option behind Tyler Eifert and Giovanni Bernard in the passing game. But he still has the potential to have those big games. We saw that a couple of years ago. He did miss basically the entire 2014 season. So, uh, you know, we didn't really have much of an opportunity to see what he could do last year. But in 2013, he had some big games. And I think that's a possibility to happen here again in 2015. Andy Dalton's playing probably the best football of his career right now. So, I mean, hey, ride it while it's hot, man. If you need a wide receiver right now and you're looking for a roll of the dice type of player, I definitely think that Marvin Jones is somebody who could produce some decent numbers for you over the next couple of weeks at least until we see a little bit more from what they're going to do there in Cincinnati. And then last on the list, guys, number 10, we've got Rashard Matthews, wide receiver of the Miami Dolphins. This is a guy who was a seventh round pick a couple of years ago, hasn't really done a whole lot throughout his career. He's had a couple of nice games here and there, but truthfully, he's being targeted the second most on the team right now behind Jarvis Landry, which is kind of surprising, I think, to a lot of people. Kenny Stills was brought in. Greg Jennings is there right now. They brought they got Devontae uh, Parker out of the draft, and none of those guys are even getting targeted close to as much right now as Rashard Matthews. So, hey... If you're looking for a stab in the dark, again, I think targets are really what you're looking for. I mean, these are the guys that have the potential to put up big numbers. If you don't get targeted, you really don't have the potential to have the monster games unless you just get lucky like Travis Benjamin has the past couple of weeks and you get targeted two or three times a game and you catch all of them for touchdowns practically. That's just not realistic though. I don't think most guys have that in their skill set. I don't think Richard Matthews does, but he does have the potential to produce you some solid fantasy days if he does continue to get targeted. So there you have it guys that's a top 10 this week in week three at the waiver wire so go out there and pick up these guys good luck with your fantasy lineups this week guys hopefully you guys get some of these players and you guys can turn around if you're at an 0 and 2 or continue to produce if you're at a 2 and 0 or even a 1 and 1 so thanks again guys hope you enjoyed the video if you did do me a favor hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new i would greatly appreciate it and hey help us out sign up on DraftKings. we've got a referral link in the description of the video below if you guys are interested in playing da daily fantasy sports Definitely check that out. Use our link in the description below. That's how we can you can help us out here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. So thanks again. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you guys next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.